Sci-Fi Christian video review. Hello, I'm Matt Anderson. I'm Benji Bono. And uh, we're here today to talk about Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Yes, I have finally seen this movie. I watched it about a month ago. You did? I thought you saw it in theaters. No, I did not. You rented it. I rented it. Yes. Good movie. I liked it. I loved it. I did not love it. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. But first, let me tell you the things that I loved okay. in the movie, because there were several of them. <laughs> Sounds good. First of all, I love the style of the film. Me also. Including the dialogue. Yes. I love the way the special effects were used. I love that it was witty. I love the gay roommate. All of that was hysterical. I liked the dialogue and I liked the humor. You know, and sometimes it even reminded me of like a Joss Whedon project with how witty it was mm -hmm. and how clever the dialogue was. That's interesting. So really, two thumbs up on the dialogue. Okay. Second thing I loved. All the video game references. If you have ever owned a Nintendo or a Super Nintendo, you're going to love this movie. Yeah, it was that was really fun. And you're not even a gamer. I'm not, and I still liked it. Did you ever play? I played Nintendo? Uh, Nintendo. I had Atari, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and then I had uh, PlayStation and PlayStation Two. So it still works for you because you're a classic gamer. Yeah, exactly. Some of the and that's what it was. Stuff. It was classic gaming. Exactly. Stuff. So great stuff in terms of the video game references. Really enjoyed that. Third thing I enjoyed. Scott Pilgrim's personal journey from being a wimp who seriously needed to grow a pair and was driving me nuts to somebody oh. who actually stood up. He was driving you nuts? Yes. And he, oh. He was so white, weak, and wimpy and passive, it drove me nuts. I, I thought he was hilarious. I, I, I love it. It was funny. I love that actor. It was funny. Um, Michael okay. Sarah. Yeah, we'll him? get to Michael Do you Sarah like Michael Sarah? Sarah? I like him, but I have a complaint. Oh man, he's awesome. <laughs> You know, he, it was, he was just such a weak character through much of the movie, but I was glad to see him grow and actually become That's somebody good. who was respectable. So that actor, who I think is hilarious, often plays characters that are similar. Yes. And so he was just playing that character. Michael Sarah is in my negative list, and we're still in the positive list. So we're staying positive uh, for the moment. Okay, fine. My final positive that I loved about the movie, Jason Schwartzman as Gideon, the main villain Why? at the end of the film. Why did you Jason like him? Schwartzman is a great actor. He's hysterical in one of the funniest movies ever made, Rushmore. Have you ever seen Rushmore? Oh my gosh, I hate that movie. I love that movie. <laughs> great film. Jason Schwartzman was great in this movie. Awesome sword fight at the end. Sometimes we have completely different views on what's a good movie. We do. And sometimes we agree. But, I mean, Sunshine, now Rushmore. Rushmore's a great movie. Except for we both like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That's, that's fantastic. But, uh, okay, anyway. So, those are my positives. Now for the negatives. Here is what I disliked in the movie. Okay. Number one, Michael Sarah. No. He was one of the best parts of the movie. I, I enjoyed him okay, but what I realized is that when I was watching him, I was watching Michael Sarah, not Scott Pilgrim. He always plays the exact same character in every movie he was in. There was no difference between how he played Scott Pilgrim and how he played his character in Juno and how he played his character in Superbad. That he has no range as an actor. He's okay, oh, he's funny, sad. but he has no range whatsoever. And that was disappointing. Let me say something. I've never seen Superbad. Yes, uh, I mean, is that, is that naughty. Is it fun or not fun? It's funny. Okay. It's also extraordinarily inappropriate. I have seen Juno. I've seen Arrested Development, which he plays uh, I've not a seen key Arrested role in. And he does play probably the same character. I, yes. I hate to say something, because that sounds negative, but he's good at it. Like Will Ferrell yeah, often but plays I, I the same, the same character. character. Like There's only a couple Will Ferrell movies that I like because he's just boring and repetitive in most of them. I like Michael Sarah. So you're saying this could have been called Michael Sarah versus the world. Yes, I, I wish that he would have brought a little bit more to the character and made it a unique role rather than just another incarnation of Michael Sarah. I, w I guess even though I really like him, I'd have to agree he did just play himself. S or his character that he plays. Second negative, and this is a big one, Ramona Flowers. What's wrong with Ramona? The whole time I was watching the movie, I could not figure out why Scott or anyone else would possibly be interested in this girl. There was nothing enjoyable about her. She was a boring character. She was a passive, passionless individual. She was not someone worth fighting for. She was, was not enjoying her character. She was the woman of his dreams, that's why. Why? What, what, what about her would suggest she's the woman of his dreams? He had a dream about her and then met her. Let me contrast her to another character from Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Clementine. Yes. They're very similar characters. No, just like Tangerine? She's Clementine. Doesn't she go by Tangerine? No, that's what he calls her as a nickname. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but her name is Clementine in the movie. 
Okay. So, Clementine is a similar character, kind of the mysterious, aloof, female hair. lead. She's got the crazy, multicolored hair that the main hero is pursuing in the film. The difference is, Clementine is a passionate, exciting character, whereas Ramona was passionless and flat during the entire movie. Let me think about this. Passionless and flat. I don't... She had no range. I didn't really feel like she was passionless and flat, and I liked the, the I liked their love story. Third thing, and final thing. Except for, can I say something? Yes. Because we're doing spoilers, obviously, in this episode. Right. Um, I didn't I'll like... A spoiler alert at the beginning. Yeah, we'll have to do that. I didn't like how she went with Gideon, and I think they explained that she was like brain control or yeah. something. That was kind of weird. Anyways, go ahead. That worked for me. <laughs> Final thing I did not like about this movie. Okay. I would have enjoyed it a lot more if there had been five evil exes instead of seven. It was too long and a bit too repetitive in places. Well, but then they kind of, I think they must have known that it was going that way because they sped it up at the end, like they had twins, right? But even there, I would have preferred it sped up uh, with the twins. The twins part was kind of dumb, I thought. I liked it. I didn't get it. Like, so their music was creating things that... I thought that was awesome. That was one of the better fight scenes in my I opinion. Didn't like that. What did you think about the well, that one of the exes was a girl? Was that weird? No, it was oh, funny. What was, <laughs> this is going to sound dumb, what was the thing that he did to her at the end? <laughs> it's not appropriate for our family viewing. <laughs> so Matt, now do you get what was going on there? I understand now. And it's not appropriate for our family audience. Okay. So, um, can I tell you some things I liked about it? Yes, but let me give you my <laughs> final rating. Okay. Four out of five stars. Oh, good. Yeah, it was good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I would recommend it. I did not love it. All right. Uh, well, F, if you listened to last week's episode, I ranked it as my number five current thing I like right now. Yes. Like when it comes to favorite stuff happening in sci-fi. Um, I thought it was super funny. I was really interested in the story. It felt like a movie I could watch again right away as soon as it ended. Um, all the characters were good. Uh, I mean, even the fight scenes were fun and interesting. Except for when that one guy like just like skated off. Oh, yeah. snowboard? Or was he was on a skateboard and then he That was kind of a there. dumb ending. Yeah. Oh, but uh, Brandon Roth, or whatever his name is, the guy that played Superman? Who was he? The guy with the blonde hair. Oh. He yeah. was awesome, right? That was pretty cool. The yeah. vegan who lost yeah. his powers when he drank dairy. Yeah, that was cool. That was awesome. I would thoroughly enjoy uh, reading the graphic novels. Yes. Uh, I flipped through one that was just in the middle of the series and... I mean, it seemed good. I think it was in black and white. I don't think they're in color. Yeah. Let me tell you one other part that's not appropriate for family viewing that I enjoyed. Are you going to cut it out? Or yes, I'm going to cut it out. So that part was pretty funny, right? It was. Yes. Great part of that movie. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, any other thoughts on Scott Pilgrim versus the world? I would highly recommend it. So you gave it four out of five, even though you said you didn't like it that much. I almost... No, I, I liked it a lot. I had a lot of criticisms that keep okay. it from being a movie I would highly recommend. Interesting. I guess I would probably give it a four too, because I can't give it five as my favorite movie. It's I guess I give it three and a half. Yeah, I felt yeah. like you give it two half the score, because I, I would probably give it a four, four and a half out of five. It was a good movie though. Yeah, good. I'm watching it. Well, that's all from here. I'm Matt Anderson. I'm Benji Bono. And we are the Sci-Fi Christians. Signing out.